Hey guys, Chris from Provo Beast Audio Installation, and in today's video, we're doing a backup camera in this 2010 Toyota Corolla. Now, in this install, we're going to show you how to integrate this backup camera to an existing aftermarket radio. Let's get started. Here at the bench, now the camera kit that we're going with is by AutoVox. It's this license plate mountable camera, and it comes with a nice bracket that fits back behind the factory license plate location. Now this kit specifically also includes a little camera harness there, and an extension harness that more or less takes what the camera sees and passes it all the way to whatever display you're using to show that camera image. The camera extension little harness plugs into our main extension harness and on the other end is that RCA video output which again goes to whatever is displaying that image of the camera, any analog input. In our case it's going to be this Sony radio which we've installed in our first video so go ahead and check that on out. In this harness here, there's a couple of wires which we'll talk about where they do connect. Now, obviously, there's this red wire which just hangs off the RCA video wire. However, there are multiple ways to wire the camera. Generally, we're going to talk about two different ways for you to power your camera. Now, option number one is usually the easiest where essentially all we're doing is going to power the camera off the reverse light power. Super easy, super straightforward. It does have its drawbacks, which we'll cover here in a moment. So under option number one, there is a power and a ground wire off of our extension harness. And generally speaking, all you do is connect this simply to the power and ground of the reverse light. Benefit of that, that camera is gonna be on whenever you're backing up and it will trigger your radio to go in reverse for you because those red wires actually run in parallel. That red wire powers not only the camera but also will feed a 12 volt trigger wire which will connect into the aftermarket radio's reverse gear trigger wire and in most cases it's either a purple white or something like that depending on the brand. That's the easiest way to hook it up. It's the most simplest. However, the drawback of option number one is that camera literally only works when that backup reverse light is on. So you can only use it while backing up. But if you want to use that camera more often, option number two allows us to actually wire that camera on accessory power so that camera is on whenever the radio is on in addition to just being in reverse so we can call upon that camera at any time the way that we wire option two is we power this camera off of accessory power but we want to power the camera whenever the radio is on on that red wire this pigtail hanging off generally used to be the reverse gear trigger wire but what we could do with it is repurpose this and send accessory power back into the harness which will feed all the way back to the camera and that's going to power the camera whenever the radio is on and that's the benefit of it now this will allow the camera to be usable at any time the downside of this since we're repurposing the red trigger wire we don't have a trigger wire anymore so we'll have to either pull another wire with it or find that reverse gear trigger source in another location within the vehicle because we're repurposing it through this harness we're going to go with option number two because we want to utilize that camera more than just in reverse our radio actually has the option to view that camera at any time in addition to just being reverse so that's going to cause us to have to run one extra wire with this camera harness to trigger the wire to go in reverse now this end of the harness because it's in parallel with the pigtail end we don't want this end to ground out because we're going to be back feeding this camera harness with accessory power from back behind the radio so we'll add a little piece of heat shrink on this power end wise because we don't want that accessory power to ground out anywhere within the rear hatch that caused all kinds of issues now we still need to ground the camera we'll ground that at the reverse light we'll show you where we're going to do that here in just a moment now we're going to grab a spool of uh, reverse gear trigger wire it's just purple 18 gauge wire and we're going to run it along from the reverse light along with our harness all the way up to the radio cavity so we're going to use this as a reverse gear trigger wire which is going to connect into our aftermarket radio so what we're going to do at this point in time is go ahead and get everything assembled here we're going to tape our wire all together start pulling our wire from the trunk area all the way into the radio cavity here at the trunk what we're going to do at this point in time is remove this carpet trim piece from up underneath the deck lid now there's a couple of clips up and around the panel itself 
Now these are all one piece clips. We're using one of these panel tools that lift and help pull the clip all in one piece. We don't want to break off the head here. And there's going to be clips up and around here. You can use a plastic vinyl panel tool or something with a little bit more leverage. Our goal here is not to break these clips and allow them to come out all in one piece. The panel out of the way, it gives us a little more access to run our wire. Now we do need to remove the trim panel above the license plate and it's held in with 10 millimeter nuts with a few studs. So let's remove those nuts and it's gonna give us the access to the grommet to pull our wiring through the trunk lid. With that now out of the way, we can wiggle the uh, trim piece above the license plate off, giving us great access. Now there is no rubber grommet here. However, there's holes that are used to actually mount the trim piece above the license plate. Now this hole specifically is a clip and is actually broken. We could use that or we could drill right through there, but you gotta worry about corrosion. So we're actually gonna repurpose this hole to pull our wire through. And we're gonna show you how to get around that when we reinstall the bezel. Now we found a grommet that actually fits that hole super well because we wanna seal that up to prevent any moisture going through. So we're gonna pass our wire through this little rubber grommet that we had in our stock. We're gonna pass our wire through that hole that we're repurposing. And then once we pull all the extra wiring through, we'll go ahead and then reseat that grommet, giving it more so a moisture tight seal uh, to prevent any water from going into the trunk lid. Now grabbing the trim panel that was above the license plate on the side that we used to repurpose for our wire, it is in this that it's a clip and it was already broken. So what we're gonna do is slightly modify this bezel here to allow our wire to pass through without getting pinched once we reinstall the bezel. Now we're back here from the bench. We modified this trim panel. We went ahead and removed the plastic there. So it's gonna allow for a wire to pass through the trunk lid without getting pinched. Let's go ahead and realign everything, get our uh, studs back through those holes. And we're gonna get this panel back on and we will also reinstall all the 10 millimeter nuts. Got that mounted there. Got this all back on. Now up underneath, it's where our camera comes through, our new little grommet. Now our reverse light is actually here in the deck lid, not down in the body, which means that we should have access to our uh, trigger wire and our ground right here at this location. So with that off, uh, your power wire is going to be red and your ground's always going to be white with a black stripe there. So we'll strip the shielding back so we have access to those two conductors. All right, so we went ahead and unplugged our reverse light harness, pulled the tape back so we have good access to those connectors. Now, our um, camera extension harness has the video cable. We also ran with it our 18 gauge trigger wire, because again, we're doing option two. We're gonna power this camera off of accessory. We went ahead and capped off the power on this end, because again, we're gonna power it from back behind the radio. We're gonna ground our camera, and then we have our reverse purple trigger wire. We tape those together here. Now we loomed it for this link that runs down here. We like to loom it so it doesn't get caught or anything. Gives it a lot more protection. We'll zip tie it to the existing loom. And then this end obviously is where it connects into the camera. Here's a camera that comes on through. We'll get it all nice and zip tied here. Now from this point, we have this loomed all the way down. Where it comes out of our loom, we went ahead and just taped it about every six inches or so, all the way to the RCA end. So let's go ahead and start fishing our wire. We're gonna go down this. We're gonna go follow on the factory wire through back behind the rear seats. We're gonna go along the kick panels on the driver's side, up underneath the steering column into the dash cavity. All right, so we went ahead and soldered on our purple goes to a red wire because that's the trigger wire and our black goes to the white with a black stripe. Now again, if you're powering the camera off of just the reverse light power, obviously you wouldn't even have this purple wire because you're just gonna be using the integrated trigger wire. So your red wire of the power harness would just go to the red wire. Black wire would go to the black white with a black stripe and that's it, so you make those. Now, if you don't wanna solder these connections like we've done here, you can also use T-taps and we can link a good T-tap in the descriptions. They're really easy to use. 
Um, we like a really solid connection. We don't want to develop any sort of short. So that's all done. We're going to go ahead and reloom everything here and get it all zip tied. And we're just about done underneath the deck lid. All right, got everything zip tied here. Made all our connections right here, up inside this cavity here. Got everything zip tied, reassembled. Everything's nice and clean. So at this point in time, we can put this cover back on. We went ahead and also zip tied up underneath all the way through. We're gonna go through the factory OEM passage there. Um, it's gonna go, uh, come out by the left uh, seat bolster, and then we're gonna go down to the kick panel. So we pulled our camera wire through that factory hole and access point. We pulled our weather stripping back and we saw that hole on the other side and fished our wire through there. We're gonna go along down, pop the kick panels off, work our way all the way to the dash cavity. All right, so we went ahead and pulled our backup camera wiring from the kick panels down below, up underneath the steering column, a long factory wiring, we just zip tied it up there and pulled it up into the dash. Now, obviously our radio has been removed previously because we covered that in great detail in the first video where we replaced the factory doubled in with an aftermarket Sony receiver. So if you wanna see that video, we'll link it down in the description. With the radio now out here, we have access to our wiring. Now we have a little bit extra. We grabbed a couple of zip ties. We're gonna go ahead and zip tie up this wiring here. Now on our harness, when we assembled our harness adapter for our radio, we left an extra accessory wire out and that'll essentially go to the repurposed trigger wire, which is now going to simply power the camera. That's gonna feed in there and we're gonna go ahead and crimp on in. Just like so. So now this end will go to the camera input on the back of the radio. Our purple wire is a reverse gear trigger, so that goes to the reverse input. Okay, that went to the reverse input there. And at this point in time, we can plug in our harnesses and get the radio installed. All right, with our connections made, let's take everything into the dash. Let's go ahead and snap in our trim bezel here. Right, so we went ahead and got the radio all back in trim and uh dash bezel is all reassembled now when you go ahead and set up your camera some radios are particular will you where you literally have to go set up the camera itself now ours went from off to normal um, and we can also adjust our guidelines there's the camera image there so with that confirmed on at this point we can go ahead and put it in reverse switch is over Perfect. It's a really nice clean image. We love it. Pull it out of reverse. Now, because we opted for wiring the camera on accessory, technically the camera is still on and we can hit rear camera here and call upon that camera at any time. And that's the benefit of wiring option number two. But again, the downside of it is we had to pull that extra purple wire as that trigger from the reverse light positive wire all the way up to the radio. But a little extra labor, came out really nice. Now, if you wanna see how we did this radio install, like mentioned before, we'll link that video in the description for you, along with the front speaker and rear speaker install as well. Thanks again for watching. Be sure to hit the like button if you liked what you saw, and don't forget to subscribe. We post great content on the channel all the time. We'll see you in the next video.